Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and today I'm going to be looking at the Hobby King 250 Mini Quad, they call it a racing quad, is it a racing quad? Well you could race it, I suppose you could. It's um, quite reasonably priced, I thought it what, under 100 bucks and that gives you this frame, the motors, the props, not these props, notice I've got two bladed props on here, I'll tell you why in a minute. It gives you the frame, the props, um, a little <laughs> FPV camera gimbal thingy which to be honest wouldn't bother with it. Um, yeah, what you need to add to this is a receiver and a flight controller, and away you go, because it comes, even comes with a battery, a 1000 milliampere hour battery um, to power it all. So it's not so bad, and it goes together without soldering, so that's quite good if you're a bit of a bumblefoot with the soldering. It's just got these little bullet connectors everywhere, so you can plug everything in, a few cable ties, um, but it's double sided tape to hold your flight controller in, and you're done. So it's a quick build, and yeah, well, what can I say? There it is. Now, as I say, it's only I've put two bladed props on. Now they come with some three bladed props like this. And you might think, why are they using three bladers when two bladers would do? Well, the reason is these are not particularly high KV motors. Well, they're about what are they, 1900 or something, I think, which is quite low compared to like the the motors on the blackout mini quad. Now these are 2300 KV. And what does that mean? Well, the higher the KV, the more RPM, the faster the motor spins. So the smaller prop you can use for the same amount of power. So these love a 5x3 two blade. Now, these of course being a lower KV motor, if you use a 5x3 two blade, you're not getting full power out of the motor. It's not going to be producing the same amount of power it would on a three blader. It's not being loaded up enough. But I had to put two bladers on because the Hobby King recommend the KK2 board for these, KK2.1.5. I ordered a brand new one of those, stuck it in here, took off, hovered, flipped it into self-leveling mode, and it went whoop, 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 splat, <laughs> it flipped. Because out of the box, the KK2.1.5 boards have the PID set all wrong for this frame for self-leveling mode. It just too much gain and it just flipped. And of course, broke the props. They only give you four props. How silly is that? Everyone who buys one of these is going to break props, so you need some spares. Why not just include them for the price they are? Because I couldn't buy any spares on Hobby King, they're out of stock. Well, they had, I think they had the conventional rotation, but no reverse rotation props. So I had to put some Gem Fan 5.3s on. Fortunately, I found that um, High Model had the three bladers in the stock. So now I've got some three bladers. I'll throw them back on and we'll do a comparison and performance. So yeah, High Model have these if you're, sure, if you're looking for them. Um, now, it has a little platform on the back where you can, how you set it up now, this is where the difference in price comes in. Not only the fact that this is plastic and the blackout is carbon, but also the way it goes together. Now I told you I was really impressed with the blackout and its, its design, its engineering, it, it's the way it fits together. This is kind of pretty rough by comparison. Now the blackout has a little platform for your Mobius, it has a little piece of carbon that your board camera bolts to and protects it inside this very, very strong carbon frame. It's got places where your FPV goes, gear goes inside the carbon frame, so everything's really well protected with this particular setup, and that, that's great. On the Hobby King, they give you a little cover, which goes over the top here, which protects the, the controller board from being squashed, but meh, everything else, you just gotta find your own place for it. There's a platform on the back, which supposedly is for your FPV transmitter or whatever, but it's a pretty small platform. It's, well, I'm not that impressed. It has a little gimbal, which you can tie into your flight controller, so that as the quad leans forward to go fast, the camera will tilt up, so you can still see the horizon, and that's quite, seems quite handy, quite useful, but to be honest, being slung underneath this quad, when you have a crash, that camera gimbal is gonna to get toasted. It's gonna to get obliterated if you land on a hard surface at speed. These little feet here, which look, you know, they're quite good, they're quite serviceable. Um, you've got to CA them into place. I tried hot glue, no, it wasn't gonna work. I tried just pushing them, that didn't work. I tried several different types of glue. Flexible CA seems to hold them in really well. They've had, this one's had some really hard knocks and the legs haven't come out before that. Every time you crash, you have to push the legs back in. So your flexible CA is ideal for holding these feet in. But again, um, even with these feet on it, if you come in with a real bit of speed and a, and a high speed run when you're doing some racing and you've got your camera out the front here, it's just going to wipe it off. It's going to, you know, so now you really have to, I think you really have to solid mount your camera. Use a wide angle lens so you can still see the horizon with your nose down. And it'll save your weight also because that gimbal requires a servo and the gimbal and yeah, yeah, I'd toss that. Maybe people are using it, maybe you're using it and finding it perfectly fine, but I think if you really want to have fun with these, you don't want to be thinking, oh, I can't go too low because I'll trash my camera gimbal. No, you want, to, you want to be able to think, I'm going to go as low as I can because if I hit something, yeah, it'll just flip and I'll pick it up and fly it again. So 
yeah, that's the secret. Now, um, as I say, it, finding a place to put things is quite hard. There's not a lot of real estate on this. Now, the, the, between props, we're looking at basically the same size of craft, but this is far less space because of the different construction. You know, it's got this little square in the middle. This has got this huge, long fuselage in which you can store stuff and mount stuff and fix stuff. So this is a lot more of a challenge to get all your gear in. And also your gear is going to be more exposed because it's all on the outside, apart from the flight controller, rather than on the inside, protected by strong carbon fiber. So there you go. Um, but again, it's under a hundred bucks. So oh, I'm not going to grizzle about too many of those features. If you want something that's really small, really tough, can be flown pretty easily, then it's pretty hard to beat this value. It's not, I wouldn't call it a real good racing quad. It's just not, it's, you know, there's a lot of drag here. There's a lot more drag, I think, than the, than the, the blackout. Um, and the blackout is so nice because there's, there's nothing really to get tangled underneath when you're going really fast and low. It's got dangly legs that hang down on a battery, which can drag and you know, cause problems if you get too low. So yeah, it's made to a price and in terms of value, it's pretty damn good. Pretty damn good, but in terms of performance, it's like comparing a Volkswagen to a Ferrari. There's just no comparison, although the prices reflect that. Now, I built this one pretty much as per the instructions which don't exist in the kit because they just leave you on your own really. There's no instructions, you just work it out. And that's pretty much how you'd build it. Um, but I'm building another one which is, I'm going to, I'm building it in a different way. I've decided to build it my way. So I've got rid of these stupid bullet connectors that are just weight and extra resistance in the, in the leads. And I've soldered everything. I'm going to, I'm using the, the uh, what is it, the NAS32 board because it's a much, much better board than the KK2 for this sort of thing. And I'm going to dick around and fit things out the way I want to do it. And we'll just do a comparison and see how it works when compared to the stock standard off the shelf, no changes version with the KK2 board. So there you go. Um, I'll do a flight video on both those uh, in the near future if I can, and we'll do some comparisons between the, you know, the normal with the KK2.1 and the one with the NACE32, but I'd say get the NACE32 board. It's about the same price as a KK, the Acro version, so, and they just work out of the box. I've never yet had to change any of the tuning on them, regardless of what size frame I've put them in. Oh, brilliant. So that's it. If you've got questions, put them on the bottom of the video. If you've got comments, do the same. I'll get on, try and do a flight test on these when the weather breaks. It's the weather's turn for the year. It's crap now, so we'll see what I can do. Thank you for watching. See you again soon on RC Model Reviews.